Okay, so it's demo day. This is the first day of our project here. And there's a lot of planning that goes in ahead of time before you start a bathroom. So if you use my checklists and you look through exactly what you want to accomplish each day, you want to make sure that you're set up for day one. Having those shut off uh, shark bite fittings to quickly shut off your water. Having all the other supplies that you might need for day one. Now there's gonna be a lot of things that you're gonna uncover that you're not expecting, but I'm hoping some of these demo videos are gonna help you um, basically see what might happen in your own bathroom and be prepared for that. Okay, so this was a master bathroom off of the master bedroom, and it was essentially just a three quarter bath, four foot wide by eight foot long, and I would say that's pretty traditional size for a split entry home. And as you can see, the shower is pretty large, three by four, but the first thing you wanna do is shut off the water of the home before removing any of these fixtures. Most of the time, these valves are pretty corroded, and as soon as you try to turn them off, they leak. So you wanna make sure you shut off that water, definitely important, you don't wanna be causing more work for yourself. And then um, I usually like to use Liquilock, putting it in the toilet to solidify the water in the toilet. I know my clients really appreciate it because I'm not spilling water as I'm removing the toilet out of the home. But keep in mind on demo day, you're always gonna find some undiscovered problems. This one actually had a cracked flange. Uh, and be sure to just subscribe to my channel. You'll be able to follow along and see the rest of the videos that it took to complete this bathroom. But to remove the shower surround really varies from home to home, but a lot of these 1970s, 80s homes, they used to just set the tile directly over drywall, so it actually becomes a very easy demo process. But if you have hardy backer, if you have cement board, or if you have even an older home with a mud bed wall, it can be a lot more difficult and take a lot more time to remove. Now, I was explaining there, and you'll see these in future videos, but I was explaining there that I want to put a recessed niche on that back wall. And as you can see, I had some wires that were in the way. So I'll be sure to show you how to go about that. But this just takes a lot of trips back and forth uh, to get rid of all this demo. And as you can see in my setup, I have some zip walls set up. These are basically uh, just a wall system with plastic to kind of eliminate some of that dust from the rest of the room. Check out the links below for that because that's really helpful to you know, keep your home from getting completely dusty. And then removing this uh, shower pan, most of the time it's just easier to plunge cut with a circular saw so that you don't harm the plumbing underneath and you can just yank that shower pan up. You can also use an inside pipe cutter as well but a lot of times plunge cutting with a circular saw really helps out. Now on most bathroom remodels, I really recommend you just take everything down to the studs, remove all that drywall. A lot of times you might have you know, wallpaper, you might have a lot of different uh, accessories that are attached, and it just takes a lot more time to actually finish that drywall than it is to put new drywall in. Plus, you'll be able to inspect all of your plumbing and all of your electrical before, before you put thousands of dollars over top of it. Uh, really helpful. I think it just gives you peace of mind. And again, you're spending a lot of money to remodel this. You might as well make sure that the core items in the bathroom, like the electrical and plumbing, are, good, are in good shape. And really at the end of the day, I mean, finishing drywall is not that difficult. Uh, I definitely have a lot of things on my channel that can show you how to go about finishing drywall. Definitely wear a respirator. This stuff is not good to inhale. Definitely been inhaling way too much of this over the years. But getting a temporary light fixture, really important for demo day. Be sure to check out that checklist. I have all these items in there so that you don't forget about certain items. One of the things about bathroom remodeling, if you're running the Home Depot or Lowe's every single day, it's gonna take you a lot longer to accomplish this. So having a checklist before you get started will really help you out and save you a lot of time. Removing the, the floor, uh, a tiled floor specifically, this can really vary too from floor to floor. In this instance, it had quarter inch hardy backer that was set over top of vinyl tiles, and then there was quarter inch Lawan below that. So I was able to actually use a 42 inch pry bar, get underneath of all of that, and then slowly pull each section out. Now, there's a lot of different situations where, you know, if you've installed the hardy backer correctly with thin set underneath of it, it could be a lot more difficult to remove this. But you'll find that most of these homes back then, they, they, they did just literally put hardy backer or cement board directly over linoleum because most of the homes had linoleum flooring. 
So it just takes a little bit of uh, elbow grease and, and prying and using some leverage with your hammer to remove that flooring. But if you're a contractor, I would definitely charge a little bit of additional money because you don't know how long it might take to remove a tiled floor. And you really want to kind of pull as many, many nails as you can out of it. It doesn't, it's not necessary to pull them all out, but you definitely want to inspect around your toilet uh, flange area. That's a very common area for uh, the subfloor to be weak and you definitely don't want to be tiling over a weak subfloor but whatever remaining nails you can just pound them into place you don't actually have to pull every little bit of that out Okay, then I like to do also to take out the ceiling as well. I think this is just as easy. It takes a lot of work to actually finish against a painted ceiling. So putting new drywall up there as well. Uh, removing your uh, existing valves. You're going to want to do this so that you can effectively put new drywall around these. Uh, and I always like to have these shark bite caps on hand. These are really important on demo day so you can get the water into the rest of your home. Now, I did uh, try to remove this valve. Sometimes they don't always come out. Sometimes they're not always soldered either. Sometimes you have uh, compression fitting types. But in this instance, I had to put a new stub out for the toilet supply and, and re-solder some things. So again, make sure you check out that checklist so that you have your materials and stuff on hand before you start this project. And then on day one, I like to have my vent fan in as well. I really think at any bathroom remodel, it's really important to have a good vent fan. I'm really a big fan of these Panasonic vent fans. Uh, they have a great flow, 110 CF on M on most of them, cubic foot per minute. But you so, you want to evaluate how you're going to actually vent it. A lot of these older homes, they didn't you know, with a window in it, they didn't even have a, a vent fan at all uh, because they were able to use the window as a venting source. But who really wants to do that in the middle of the winter of actually opening up that window? So putting a good vent fan is a, is a really helpful thing. Uh, I have a lot of videos on my channel on how to install these vent fans, and this one will be a future video as well. But you want to just make sure that you're going to have your ductwork set up. And uh, in this instance, I had to run a new wire as well because there was no vent fan to begin with. And at the end of the day, I like to just go ahead and put my drywall into place. This, I find, really keeps peace of mind to the client. Uh, they don't have to look up into their attic space. They're not afraid of mice or snakes for that matter. But I also like to run a wire for a separate light above the shower. I really think lighting is an important aspect in a small bathroom because anytime there's a dim area, it's just going to make it feel smaller. So putting a recessed light fixture above that shower is going to make a big difference and then you know putting the new drywall up it is good to liquid nail or uh, glue your your drywall i have a lot of great videos on how to go about doing drywall yourself uh, if you work alone it's really some of these strategies will definitely help you out and we're getting close to the end of the day um, i do like to get that recessed light in place so that uh, I do have lighting for the next day. Using a roto zip uh, really helps out on cutting a lot of areas of drywall. But these halo lights are great. Uh, I always try to have them separate from the vent fan. And I love to put them again up above those showers. So a lot more to come on this bathroom remodel. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. But you know what I, my goal is, is to help simplify bathroom remodeling and get you an end product like this. And uh, yeah, so please subscribe, give me a like on this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.